The Ancient Mariner, written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, written in 1798. It is an ancient mariner, and he stoppeth one of three, by thy long grey beard and thy glistening eye. And wherefore stoppest me? The bridegroom's door are opened wide, and I am next of kin. The guests are met, the feast is set, mayst hear the merry din. But still he holds the wedding guests. There was a ship, quoth he. Nay, if thou'st got a laugh, some tale, mariner, come with me. He holds him with a skinny hand, quoth he, there was a ship. Now get thee hence, thou greybeard loon, or my staff shall make thee skip. He holds him with his glittering eye, the wedding guest stood still, and listens like a three years child. The mariner hath his will. The wedding guest sat on a stone. He cannot curse but hear. And he thus spake on the ancient man, the bright-eyed mariner. The ship was cheered, the harbour cleared. Merrily did we drop below the kirk, below the hill, below the lighthouse top. The sun came up upon the left. Out of the sea came he, and he shone bright and on the right went down into the sea. Higher and higher every day, till over the mast at noon, the wedding guest here beat his breast, for he heard the loud bassoon. The bride hath packed into the hall, red as a rose is she, nodding her heads before her goes and the merry minstrels. The wedding guest he beat his breast, yet he cannot choose but hear, and thus spake on that ancient man, the bright-eyed mariner. Listen, stranger, storm and wind, and wind and tempest strong, for days and weeks it played us for freaks, like chaff we drove along. Listen, stranger, mist and snow, it grew wondrous cold, and ice must high came floating by as green as emerald. And through the drifts the snowy clefts did send a dismal sheen. Near shapes of men, near beasts we ken, the ice was all between. The ice was here, and the ice was there, the ice was all around. It cracked and growled and roared and howled, like noises of a swound. At length did cross an albatross through the fog it came, and it were a Christian soul. We hailed it in God's name. The mariners gave it biscuit worms, and round and round it flew. The ice did split with, with a thunder fit, and the helmsman steered us through. And a good south wind sprung up behind, the albatross did follow, and every day for food or play came to the mariner's halloo. In mist or cloud, on mast or shroud, it perched for vespers nine, whiles all the night through fog smoke white glimmered the white moonshine. God save thee, ancient mariner, for the fiends that plague thee thus. Why lookest through so with my crossbow? I shot the albatross. Too. The sun came up upon the right, out of the sea came he, and broad as, as a wept upon the left, went down into the sea. And the good south wind still blew behind, but no sweet bird did follow. Nay, any day for food or play came to the mirror's halloo. And I had done a hellish thing, and it would work and woe, for all averred I'd killed the bird that made the breeze to blow. Nay, dim, nay, red, like God's own head, the glorious sun upro Ne dim ne red like God's own head, the glorious sun uprist. Then all averred I'd killed the bird that brought the fog and mist. Twas right they said such birds to slay that bring the fog and mist. The breezes blow, the white foam flew, the furrow followed free. We were the first that ever burst into that silent sea. Down dropped the breeze, the, the sails dropped down, Twas sad as sad could be. And we did speak only to break the silence of the sea, All in a hot and copper sky, the bloody sun at noon, Right up above the mast did stand, no bigger than the moon. Day after day, day after day, we stuck, ne breath, ne, ne motion, As idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean. Water, water everywhere, and all the boards did shrink. Water, water everywhere, ne any drop to drink. The very deep did rot, O oh Christ, that ever this should be. Ye slimy things did crawl with legs upon the slimy sea. About, about, in reel and rout, the death fires danced at night. The water, like our witch's oils, burnt green and blue and white. And some in dreams, assured were of the spirit that plagued us so. Nine fathoms deep he followed us, 
on the land of mist and snow, and every tongue through uttered drouth was withered at the root, we could not speak no more than if we had been choked with soot. And well a day what evil looks, had I from old and young, instead of the cross the albatross around my neck was hung. 3. I saw something in the sky no bigger than my fist, at first it seemed a little speck, and then it seemed a mist. It moved and moved, and at last a certain shape I wist. A speck, a mist, a shape, I wist, and still it neared and neared, and it dodged a water sprite, it plunged and tackled and veered, with a throat unslapped, with black lips baked. Nay could we laugh, nay wail, though while through froth all done they stood. I bit my arm and sucked the blood and cried, A sail, a sail! With throat unslacked, with black lips baked, agape they heard me call, Gramercy! They for joy did grin, and all at once their breath drew in, as they were drinking all. She doth not tack from side to side, hither to work as wheel, without an wind, without an tide, she steadies with upright keel. The western wave was all aflame, the day was well nigh done, almost upon the western wave rested the broad bright sun. When that strange shape drove suddenly betwixt us and the sun, and straight the sun Flecked with bars, heaven's mother send us grace, as if through a dungeon's gate he peered with broad and burned face. Alas, thought I, and my heart beat loud, how fast she nears and nears, and those her sails that glance in the sun like restless gossamers, are those her naked ribs which flecked the sun that did behind them peer, and are those too all the crew, the woman, and her fleshless peer? His bones were black with many a crack, all black and bare I when, jet black and bare, save with rust or mouldy damps and charnel crust, their patched with purple and green her lips are red her looks are free her locks are yellow as gold her skin is as white as leprosy and she is far like a death than he her flesh makes the still air cold the naked hulk alongside came and the twain were playing dice the game is done i've won i've won quoth she and whistled thrice a gust of wind started up behind and whistled through his bones through the holes of his eyes and the hole of his mouth half whistles and half groans with never a whisper in the sea, off darts the spectral ship. Well come above the eastern bar, the horned moon, the one bright star, almost between the tips. One after one by the horned moon, listen, O stranger to me, each turned his face with a ghastly pang, and cursed me with his e. Four times fifty living men, with never a sigh or groan, with heavy thump, a lifeless lump, they dropped down one by one. Their souls did from their bodies fly, they fled to bliss or woe, and every soul it passed me by, like the whiz of my crossbow. 4. I fear thee, ancient mariner, I fear thy skinny hand, and thou art long and lank and brown, as is the ribbed sea sand. I fear thee and thy glistening eye, and thy skinny hand so brown. Fear not, fear not, thou wedding guest. This body dropped not down. Alone, alone, all alone, along on the wide, wide sea. And Christ would take no pity on my soul in agony. The many men so beautiful, and they all dead did lie. And a million, million slimy things lived on, and so did I. I looked upon the rotting sea, and drew my eyes away. I looked upon the Elrich deck, and there... The dead men lie. I looked to heaven and tried to pray, but or ever a prayer had gushed a wicked whisper and made my heart as dry as dust. I closed my lids and kept them close till the balls like pulses beat from the sky and sea and the sea and sky lay their load on my weary eye, and the dead were at my feet. The cold sweat melted from their limbs, nay rot, nay reek, did they. The look with which they looked on me had never passed away. An orphan's curse would drag to hell a spirit from on high. But, oh, more horrible than that is the curse in a dead man's eye. Seven days and seven nights I saw that curse, and yet could not die. The moving moon went up the sky, and nowhere did abide. Softly she was going up, and a star or two beside. Her beams bemocked the sultry main, like morning frosted spread. 
But where the ship's huge shadow lay, the charm waters burnt away, a still and awful red. Beyond the shadow of the ship, I watched the water snakes. They moved in tracks of shimmering white, and when they reared, the elfish light fell off in hoary flakes. Within the shadow of the ship, I watched their rich attire, blue, glossy green, and velvet black. They coiled and swam, and every track was a flash of golden fire. O oh, happy living things, no tongue, their beauty might declare. A spring of love gushed from my heart, and I blessed them unaware. Sure my kind saint took pity on me, and I blessed them unaware. The self-same moment I could pray, and from my neck so free, the albatross fell off and sunk like lead into the sea. 5. O oh, sleep, it is a gentle thing, beloved from pole to pole, to Mary Queen, the praise to be given. She sent the gentle sleep from heaven that slid into my soul. The silly buckets on the deck that had so long remained, I dreamt that they were filled with dew, and when I awoke it rained. My lips were wet, my throat was cold, my garments all were dank. Sure, I had drunken in my dreams, and still my body drank. I moved and could not feel my limbs. I was so light, almost I thought that I'd died in sleep, and was a blessed ghost. The roaring wind, it roared far off. It did not come anear, but with its sound it shook the sails that were so thin and sheer. The upper air bursts into life, and a hundred fire flags sheen. To and fro they are carried about, and to and fro and in between. The stars dance on between. The coming wind doth roar more loud. The sails do sigh like sedge. The rain pours down from one black cloud, and the moon is at its edge. Hark, hark, the thick black cloud is cleft, and the moon is at its side, like waters shot from some high crag. Like the lightning falls with never a jag, a river steep and wide. The strong wind reached the ship, it roared, and dropped down like a stone. Beneath the lightning and the moon, the dead men gave a groan. They groaned, they stirred, they all uprose, they spake, they moved their eyes. It all had been strange, even a dream, to have seen those dead men. The helmsman steered, the ship moved on, it never a breeze up blew. The mariners all gained work the ropes, where they weren't to do. They raised their limbs like useless tools. We were a ghastly crew. The body of my brother's son stood by me knee to knee. The body and I pulled at one rope. But he said naught to me. And I quaked to think of my own voice. How frightful it would be. The daylight dawned. They dropped their arms and clustered round the mast. Sweet sounds rose slowly through their mouths and from their bodies passed. Around, around flew each sweet sound, then darted to the sun. Slowly the sounds came back again, now mixed, now one by one. Sometimes a, a dropping from the sky I heard the lavrocks sing, sometimes all little birds that are. How they seemed to fill the sea and air with their sweet jargoning. And now, twas like all instruments, now like a lonely flute. And now it is an angel's song that makes the heavens be mute. It ceased, yet still the sails made on, a pleasant sound till noon, a noise like of a hidden brook in the leafy month of June, that to, to the sleeping woods all night singeth a quiet tune. Listen, O oh listen, thou wedding guest, mariner, thou hast thy will, for that which comes out of thine eyes doth make my body and soul be still. Never sadder tale was told to a man of woman born, sadder and wiser thou wedding guest, thou'lt rise to-morrow morn. Never sadder tale was heard by a man of woman born, the mariners all returned to work as silent as before. The mariners all again pulled the ropes, but look at me and the old, thought I, I am as thin as air, they cannot me behold. Till noon we silently sailed on, yet never a breeze did breathe, Slowly and smoothly went the ship, moved onwards from beneath, under the keel nine fathoms deep, from the land of mist and snow. The spirit slid, and it was he that made the ship go on. The sails at noon left off their tune, and the ship stood still also. The sun right above the mast 
had fixed her to the ocean, but in a minute she gained stir with a short uneasy motion, backwards and forwards along her length with a short uneasy motion. Then, like a pawning horse let go, she made a sudden bound. It flung the blood into my head, and I fell into a swound. How long in that same fit I lay, I have not to declare, but ere my living life returned, and I heard in my soul discerned two voices in the air. Is it he, quoth one? Is this the man, by him who died on the cross, with his cruel bow, he laid full low the harmless albatross, the spirit who bideth by himself in the land of mist and snow, he loved the bird, and, and loved the man who shot him with his bow. The other was a softer voice, as soft as honey dew. Quoth he, The man hath penance done, and penance more will do. Six. First voice. But tell me, tell me, speak again, thy soft response renewing. What makes the ship drive on so fast? What is the ocean doing? Second voice. Still as a slave before his lord, the ocean hath no blast. His great bright eye must silently look to the moon is cast. If he may know which way to go, she guides him smooth or gur. See, brother, see, how graciously she looketh down on him. First voice. Why drives on that ship so fast, without an wave or wind? Second voice. The air is cut away before and closes from behind. Fly, brother, fly, more high, more high, or we shall be belated. Or slow and slow that ship will go, when the mariner's trance is abated. I woke, and we were sailing on, as in a gentle weather. T'was night, calm night, the moon was high, the dead men stood together. All stood together on the deck, for a charnel dungeon fitter. All fixed on me their stony eyes, that in the moon did glitter. The pang, the curse, with which they died, had never passed away. I could not draw from e'en from theirs, and they turned them up to pray, and in its time the spell was snapped, and I could move my e'en. I looked far forth, but saw little of what might else be seen, like one that on a lonely road doth walk in fear and dread, and having once turned around, walks on, and turns no more his head, because he knows the frightful fiend doth close behind him tread. But soon there breathed a wind on me, nay sound no motion made, its path was not upon the sea, in ripple or in shade. It raised my hair, it fanned my cheek, like a meadow gale of spring. It tingled strangely with my fears, yet it felt like a welcoming. Swiftly, swiftly flew the ship, yet she sailed softly too. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze, on me alone it blew. A dream of joy, is this indeed the lighthouse top I see? Is this the hill, is this the kirk? Is this mine own country? We drifted over the harbour bay, And I with sobs did pray, Oh, let me be awake, my God, Or let me sleep away. The harbour bay was clear as glass, As smoothly it was strewn, And on the bay the, the moonlight lay, And the shadow of the moon. The moonlight bay was white all over, Till rising from the same, Full many shapes that shadows were, Like as of torches came, A little distance from the prow, those dark red shadows were, as soon as I saw that my own flesh was red as in the glare. I turned my head in fear and dread, and by the holy rod the bodies did advance, and now before the mast they stood, they lifted up their stiff right arms, they held them straight and tight, each right hand burnt like a torch, a torch that borne upright, their stony eyeballs glittered on in the red and smoky light. I prayed and turned my head away, forth looking as before. There was no breeze upon the bay, no wave against the shore. The rock shone bright, the kirk no less, that stood above the rock. The moonlight steeped in still silentness, the steady weathercock. And the bay was white with silent light, till rising from the same, full, many shapes that shadows were, in crimson colours came. A little distance from the prow, those crimson shadows were, I turned my eyes upon the deck. O oh Christ, what I saw! Each corpse lay flat, lifeless and flat, and by the holy rod, a man all light, a seraphim man, of every course they stood. This seraphim band, each waved his hand, it was a holy light, 
They stood as signals to the land, each one a lovely light. The seraphim band each waved his hand, no voice did they impart. No voice, but oh, the silence sank like music on my heart. Left sons, I heard the dash of oars, I heard the pilot's cheer. My head was turned, performance away, and I saw a boat appear. Then vanished all the lovely lights, the bodies rose anew. With silent pace, each took his place, came back the ghastly crew. The wind that shade no more, nor motion made, on me alone it blew. The pilot and the pilot's boy, I heard them coming fast. Dear Lord in heaven, it was a joy, the dead men could not blast. I saw a third, I heard his voice, it is the hermit good. He singeth loud his godly hymns, he makes them in the wood. He's shriven my soul, he'll wash away the albatross's blood. 7. This hermit good lives in that wood, which slopes down to the sea. How loudly his sweet voice he rears. He loves to talk with mariners that come from a far country. He kneels at morn and noon and eve. He hath a cushion plump. It is of moss that wholly hides the rotten old oak stump. The skiff boat neared, I heard them talk. Why this is strange, I trow. Where are those lights so many and fair? That signal made but now. Strange by my faith, the hermit said, and they answered not our cheer. The planks look warped, and their sails, how thin they are and sheer. I never saw aught like to them, unless, perchance it were, the skeletons of leaves that lag my forest brook alone, when the ivy tod is heavy with snow, and the owlet whoops to the wolf below that eats the she-wolf's young. Dear Lord, it has a fiendish look, the pilot made reply. I am feared, push on, push on, said the hermit cheerily. The boat came closer to the ship, and I nay spake nor stirred. The boat came close beneath the ship, and straight a sound was heard. Under the water it rumbled on, still loud and more dread. It reached the ship, it split the bay, the ship went down like lead. Stunned by the loud and dreadful sound, which sky and ocean smote, like one that hath been seven days drowned, my body lay afloat. But, swift as dreams, myself I found within the pilot's boat. Upon the whirl where sank the ship, the boat spun round and round, and all was still, save that the hill was telling of the sound. I moved my lips, the pilot shrieked, and fell down in a fit. The holy hermit raised his eyes, and prayed where he did sit. I took the the oars, the pilot boy, who did now doth crazy go, laughed loud and long, and all the while his eyes went to and fro. Ha ha, quoth he, full plain I see, the devil knows how to row. And now, all in my own country, I stood on firm land, the hermit stepped forth from the boat, and scarcely he could stand. Oh, shriv me, shriv me, holy man, the hermit crossed his brow. Say quick, quoth he, I bid thee stay, what manner man art thou? Forthwith this frame of mine was wretched, with a woeful agony, which forced me to begin my tale, and then left me free. Since then, at an uncertain hour, now often times and now fewer, that anguish comes and makes me tell my ghastly adventure. I pass like night from land to land, I have strange power of speech. The moment that his face I see, I know that the man that must hear me, to him my tale I teach. What loud uproar bursts from the door, the wedding guests are here. But in the garden bower the bride and the bridesmaids singing are, and hark the lisp, little vesper's bell, which biddeth me to prayer. O wedding guest, this soul hath been alone on a wide, wide sea. So lonely twas that God himself scarce seemed there to be. O sweeter than the wedding feast, tis sweeter far to me, to walk together to the kirk with a goodly company, to walk together to the kirk, and all together pray, with each to his great father bend, old men and babies and beloved friends, and youths and maidens gay, farewell, farewell, but this I tell to thee, thou wedding guest, he prayeth well who loveth well, both man and bird and beast. He prayeth best who loveth best, all things both great and small. For the dear God who loveth us, he made and loveth all. The mariner who, whose eye is bright, whose beard with age is hoar, is gone, 
and now the wedding guest turned from the bridegroom's door. He went like one that hath been stunned, and is in a sense forlorn, a sadder and wiser man, he rose the morrow morn.